you have asked in comments about the e-commerce functionality, the web shop functionality. So let's prepare our CMS for that. Let's also prepare the administration part. So we now need to organize our code to allow for uh, such expansion with uh, modules, for example. And uh, let's first move uh, all files one level outside of the uh, public area, the public uh, web folder, in this case, this uh, public here. If you remember, all of our code lies within this publicly accessible folder. It means that the server or the browser has direct access to all these files here. And that is something we should have done perhaps in the beginning. And uh, this will basically remove the possibility for files to be opened directly from the browser. Even though with our object-oriented uh, code organization, our files would not actually run anything if accessed directly. For example, if you would access this uh, entity file directly, nothing would have happened from the browser. However, if our server would go down due to some overload or something, the Apache server, which is basically very rare in modern servers. But if that would happen, these files would be uh, shown to the browser as a simple uh, text file, like a plain text to the browser, uh, basically showing all of our code to the attacker, to the hacker, and we don't want that to happen. So let's move all of our files uh, out of the server root so that only file accessible from the open internet is basically the index.php file and of course images and CSS and JavaScript. So I will select everything inside the public except for the index.php and I will move that one folder up. Now the only publicly accessible folder is index.php and as if we refresh our website, as expectedly it fails and that is because the index.php cannot file find any other file. Luckily, because we have one centralized organization, the only thing that we need to change now is uh, this uh, index.php file so that it knows where it can include all the other files. And in our case, we are just going to go one uh, folder, one level up and then add another directory separator. And if we refresh now, we can see that our website is actually working. And since we have dynamic routes, everything is working and all the pages are being uh, working correctly. So that is one advantage of having not having duplicate of the code is we can do huge changes at a relatively small cost. That way we are not afraid to do the refactoring because we would have to change everything. This way we have control over, over our code. Now to make modules, it's uh, easiest to organize our codes in the modules. So let's make one uh, mod module folder where all of our modules will uh, be. So it will be uh, modules. And inside let's make our uh, page module because the page functionality or the page controller will uh, actually be inside the page module now. So that page module with ha will have its own controllers and its own modules. And for now the views, but it might have its own libraries, etc. And another module that we will need is the contact module which will have the similar structure with uh, controllers, models and views. I see we have this about us that we are going to delete. That is just a leftover for before. And now we are going to move this page controller inside our page model, uh, sorry, a page module controller and the same with the contact controller. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's the wrong folder. This one belongs here. And let's do the same for the views. And this static page will be moved to the page model because there is a file that belongs to that model logically. We will have some views that are not module specific like status pages and the layout. This contact is not needed. Let's do the same for the models. We have the page model and we don't have anything for the controllers and that way we can uh, delete our global controllers and models folder because we are basically not going to use them uh, outside of the modules. And now everything is broken. That is because we moved everything around. Now, since we have uh, our modules folder, it's easier for us to declare one uh, constant that will basically have the mod modules path. And that will be modules here. And then we are going to use that modules path to include some files that are uh, modules relevant. In this case, we are missing the page and that is because the page was inside our model. Now we go need to go to the module path and we need to go to the page models. And now we don't get to any controllers and let's fix that one uh, quickly. So here we have this controller file, which basically is duplicate. So let's move that to a variable called the controller file, which will be module path. 
and then it will take the module name because we have the module name from the router. If you remember last time, we, pre we prepared for that sort of. And if we would to check for that controller file and then include it, uh, still nothing happening. And that is because I'm missing uh, uh, controllers here. And I see that this page controller is outside of its folder. So let's try our luck again. And now we are back to the page module and the page controller, except that it doesn't know where to find the static pages now, the static page template. So let's fix that one quickly. And for now, let's uh, hard code the path here. That will be page views static mo page. And in our uh, template layout, here we need to, need to change the view path to the module path because we moved everything to modules, if you remember. And now we have the home page and the about page. Let's see the contact page. It should break and that's correct. And that is because we also need to give the bit more precise path as to where this template is uh, now located. We can make this dynamic in the future, but for now, let's quickly make it work. So in contact controller, here we will put the contact views static page. I know for the static page, it's in pages. And I have double contact. And now we have our website back to the beginning, except that we have organized our code in modules. And I put some path uh, hard coded, but we can change that. So let's not complicate our code for, our code for now. We can put uh, a lot of things in database and extract module name and controller name, etc. So we will change that, but we actually need to change it. Like for example, we still have to change this uh, auto inclusion file so that we don't have to require files manually. We will fix that in some lessons in some of the next episodes where we can cover the auto loader uh, logic or the magic. But uh, for now, let's continue like this and uh, let's clean up our models here. If you recall in the previous lesson, we made the, we started with the active record and we have these fields in our modules, in our models, sorry, set like this. However, this is a bit tricky when we need to remember that we have to set the database and table name and fields each time we create the models. If we would make one new model, for example, for the navigation or for something else, we would always have to copy and to remember this and we have to document it and the application will fail or we need to check if this field is being set while constructing the entity, our active record entity. And since we have a, a quite a simple values here, we can solve this partial with a constructor for these simple values like a database connection and the table name. So let's make one constructor inside the entity, inside our parent, and that will be protected construct. And it will require a database connection here and the table name. And this constructor will then set these values for us. And from here, we only need to call our parent construct with these values. And uh, let's check if everything is working. Of course not. We need the table name. That is because it's hard coded here. And here it needs to be called as pages. Now everything is good. However, we still have these fields here, the list of our fields. And the general rule is that the parent constructor should be the first one called here inside our children constructor constructor. So to define these fields before calling the const the parent constructor will just feel unnatural. It doesn't feel right to do it. In this situation, we can use uh, abstract classes that can provide us with some universal functionality, like in our case, the uh, find by and set values, etc. But one good thing about abstract class is that it can force our children classes to implement some methods, like in our case, uh, we can make one method that will always need to be uh, initiated by our children classes, and that will set these fields. And our code would not run if we don't implement that method. So if you remember the previous uh, diagram, the inheritance diagram that uh, we had from before, where child classes, they inherit functionality from their parent class, in this case, the controller, but the same applies for the entity as we have it in our active record. The abstract classes are pretty much the same, except that they can, the parents can ask their children to, uh, beside inheriting some functionality, it can also require the implementation of some functionality. So we have additional property, in this case, the init fields here, or the method in this case, sorry, not the property, but it, uh, we can define abstract properties. And now our children, 
besides inheriting uh, these properties and methods above, they are forced or obligated to uh, implement their own implementation of the init fields method in this case. This one italic here. So each of classes that inherit the uh, parent class, controller in this case, but uh, also the same goes for entity. Each of those classes has to implement their own version of this method. Otherwise, if this method is not defined or the properties that are marked as abstract, we would get a fatal error when the first time our class is reached. And let's see on the php.net uh, how it looks in, uh, in practice. So php abstract class. And we can see that the only thing that we need is to use this abstract keyword inside, in front of the class definition and also in front of the property definition. So in our class, our parent class, we would only define these uh, abstract methods here without any implementation. So these uh, methods don't have any functionality here. They are thus abstract. But in our children methods, we are going to force the extending class to define these methods. And this looks pretty much uh, the similar as the interfaces do. But the main in uh, difference between the interfaces and the abstract class is that the interfaces do not allow us to have any implementation in them. In this case, the abstract class can have one common method that is uh, actually implemented here inside our abstract class. So the abstract class is sort of like a combination of the interfaces and the regular class. Another huge difference between interfaces and the abstract class is that children can implement several interfaces at the same time, but can inherit only one and single abstract class. And there is a, there are different use cases for that, and we will show interfaces and their practical usage in uh, future videos. However, we can combine actually abstract classes with interfaces. And that is what, for example, Laravel does in their active record model. So here in Eloquent, they have the abstract class model that actually implements several of interfaces and also uses some traits. But as far as I can see, they don't have they don't actually have any abstract uh, methods defined in this particular class. So that is pretty much all there is to abstract classes. It's just a regular class that forces its children to define some methods and, and properties. And this is usually useful if you have multiple similar classes or objects as we have here. And uh, we need to make some kind of contract between them. But it's also very useful at the same time to give classes some uh, default functionality like we do with uh, our in our example. So let's change our code to use abstract classes. So here in our entity, we need to define this class as the abstract. And to be perfectly honest, there are probably better ways of ensuring that our child classes uh, have to provide these fields uh, here in our class. We could do some injection, perhaps even at uh, the constructor, the similar way we did with our database name and field. But for now, I think that abstract classes uh, fit here. And uh, although I personally do not use abstract classes that much, I think I often use uh, traits for similar things. But uh, we will learn traits in some traits in some future videos. But since this is a tutorial, we might as well learn new things while we are working on our CMS. And since this is an object-oriented code, we can always easily come back here and refactor our code as we did pretty much in every lesson so far. And uh, by having this abstract keyword here, we pretty much have everything we needed. If we try our website, it will st still run as expected. However, if we would uh, create one uh, protected function, like on the php.net, let's call it, uh, I don't know, init fields. And if we go now to our page extending that one, the good editor will actually show you that the page uh, is not abstract and does not overwrite the abstract method in its fields. So the IDE is actually complaining that there are some missing methods. And if we would to run our page now, we would actually get the fatal error saying that the class router contains one abstract method and must be defer abstract, or it has to implement the remaining uh, method. So let's implement that remaining method that will we call the init fields. And there we are basically going to set these fields. But now in our parent constructor, we need to actually call this init fields method so that the fields are set. Let's refresh now. And there's still something missing. 
Oh yes, and there is that the uh, class router now needs to implement that one. So the similar way we did it uh, inside our page model, we need to do the same inside of our router model that is here. We need to move these fields here. And uh, here we also need to do the same thing that we did in our page model. We need to define our constructor and our fields. And now the, hell, the pages and the contact pages and everything is working. I am aware that the submitting of this contact uh, is not working. So if it's not working for you, don't stress about it. We will fix it in some future lessons because we now need to reorganize the code to the modules so that it's a bit more changes that we need to do. And again, the abstract classes allow for both reusable code with some concrete implementation of some methods that the children can inherit and use, but also for some abstract fields and methods that has to be implemented by each and every child that is inheriting this class, the parent class. And that is pretty much it for this lesson. In the following videos, we will start working on the CMS administration. So where the place where people will be able to log in and to go and actually change the content of the website without us having to go to the database as we are doing now. So we will start with the login, we will extend our active record. So I kindly ask you to subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos come out. Bye!